result though for Alex Lloyd in second place. We will see more of that kid, do not worry. Alex Lloyd has held himself valiantly all the way through the weekend in second place and done a magnificent job. And he will be joined by his fellow Brit on the podium, the revelation of the weekend. Without any shadow of doubt, the Scotsman Kean Shields will walk away from this with a podium finish in third place. What a magnificent result. And so, from one fast Scot to another on the front row of the grid, for the next race, the X30 Senior Final. And the man who will start on the front row of the grid, Dean McDonald, alongside Joe Turney. The pair of them battling for X30 Senior Honours in a class that is very much dominated by the Brits. There were quite a few of them in behind Marty Boyer initially in the X30 Juniors, but Marty Boyer could not be defeated here today. And having been first in every single session, the Spaniard walks away with a ticket to the IAMI European Series in his pocket. And now we are 10 minutes away from the start of the final race of the weekend. This is the big one. 87 drivers started the weekend in X30 Senior. There are only 34 left, and each of them have an equal opportunity to become the IAMI X30 Senior IAMI Winter Cup champion. They have all battled valiantly. It's been a lot closer in the X30 Seniors than it has been in some of the other categories, with so many different drivers having an opportunity to win this magnificent event. They will all battle valiantly for the victory, and it will be incredibly close. In the top six positions, they are all British, and they all have a genuine chance to win their first international championship of 2018. On the front row of the grid, two men who have been winners several times through the course of the weekend, Joe Turney and Dean McDonald for KR Sport and Strawberry Racing respectively. And they will share occupation on the front row of the grid. The other case, KR Sport driver Clayton Ravenscroft has fought his way valiantly to third position and rightfully now has an opportunity to win the whole thing from the inside line on the second row. He will have a great opportunity to get the job done. Alongside him on the grid will be the Litchfield Racing driver Oliver Clark and he will obviously be still as resilient and as battle hardy as ever before. Somehow Oliver Clark, despite being on that outside line, always seems to find himself right there on the edge of victory and maybe just maybe he saved his very best till last. But do not count out the two men on the third row of the grid, Mark Kimber and Jordan Brown Nutley who are there on the third row, both of whom have tasted much success in the Senior X30 class, despite only being relative newcomers to the class, particularly in Mark Kimber's case. But they are both incredibly good at their craft. They are both natural-born winners, and potentially today could be their day. The next one to take it to them is going to be the Irishman, John Norris, who is there on the inside line of the fourth row. Opposite from him on the outside line is Louis Westover, and he will find it particularly tough for the Pierce Sexton Racing Team to try and move his way further forward. But Louis Westover has done valiantly thus far and finds himself rightly and deservedly within the top 10 and firmly there. Then we have on the fifth row of the grid another British contender, Sam White, who has done a brilliant job up to this point. And now he can breathe a small sigh of relief in the fact that he's on the inside line. So that gives him a really good chance of a good start. And alongside him is the Spanish hero in this class for Praga España, Jorge Pescador who has been absolutely brilliant all the way through the day, always in the top 10, always hard and resilient, and potentially he could be the next one to topple one of the guys in front of him. Then just outside the top 10, we have Hans Morin of Sweden, who lines up beside Carlos Saval, two drivers who have both worked very hard to get where they are, but again have just been let down at the very last minute with a little teething trouble here or there, but now both of them have a chance to put that right in this uh, last race of the day. Then comes the CRG driver, Philip Rawson, who has been an absolute comeback hero and has worked his way from a very disappointing couple of grid positions right back into the mix, just on the outskirts of the top 10. And being on the inside line should give Philip Rawson the motivation and the ability to continue that march back through the field. He's only 13th on the grid, don't forget, and that would put him 7th in the line going down to the first corner on the inside. So Rawson's got a good chance to make up more places, and he's been one of the most overtaking of drivers here at this meeting. 
Alongside him on the grid is another superb British racer, Gus Lawrence in the 256, who has been very strong all the way through the weekend and has really picked up a little bit of form in the latter stages of the earlier pre-final, and that will give him a good chance to go for victory himself. Then on the eighth row of the grid, we have Morgan Porter, who has done very well indeed from where he currently is and still has plenty more to come, no doubt, in the final. And alongside him is the Spanish local Ruben Moya, who has been up and down the grid like a pendulum and is desperately trying to make sure he finishes on a high. Alongside in the ninth row of the grid, we have the Swede and the Spaniard, Patrick Rundqvist and Enric Bordes Cotes. And they will continue to charge forward with the two Spanish drivers just in behind them as well, Philip Vava and Antonio Herrerias de Dios. Next comes the drivers just outside the top 20, some of whom are really on a fight back mission here. Daniel Mathia, who has done very well since he won the repassage earlier on and is still trying to fight his way further up the grid, but the Praga Espana driver is doing all the right things at the moment, starting in 21st. The Finn, Levi Lintucanto, who was fastest in his qualifying group on Friday and has had good opportunities uh, somehow taken from him from time to time. But now, Levi Lintucanto has got the speed, he's got the ability, and he may have the confidence to go straight for it and hopefully come back with a good result. Uh, then we have Kamil Donic of Poland, set there in 23rd on the grid on the 12th row alongside Sim Liedmar, the Estonian, as both of them have had good opportunities that they will try and improve upon in this last race of the weekend. Then we have the Frenchman Enzo Giraud on the 13th row of the grid alongside the Swedish lady Matilda Olsen, who has been working very hard indeed to move her way forward. And although she is on the outside row of the grid, all she needs is a decent start and the rest of the race can flow in her favour. Rens van Pelt and Xavier Hansen, two Belgians on the comeback trail, desperately trying to improve upon their recent form. Their early weekend form had them right in the top 10. Uh, Rens van Pelt had a cruel chance of victory snatched away from him in the weekend when he broke down while chasing Dean McDonald. He now finds himself right at the back of the grid uh, on the 14th row alongside another man who's had nothing but bad luck in the end, Xavier Hansen, who has the speed to be at the front of the grid but both he and Renz van Pelt have nothing more to lose so they just need to jog on get on with it Rien never blue and go for the victory so let's see how they go uh, we've also got Fred Eriksson and Alejandro Lajos Loop the Spaniard on the 15th row of the grid and then the final four who have made the cut are Arnold Milizia, Christopher Shani, Juan Carlos Hernandez and Sam McDonald the Irishman So as Joan Jett rings out on the start-finish straight and Clayton Ravenscroft gets his groove on, it is going to be an amazing race ahead of us in the X30 Senior Final. We're going to have an absolutely spectacular race in front of us. 34 drivers have been whittled down out of the 87 starters. The mechanic's whistle blows and they must clear the grid. Every single driver has earned their place on this grid. They will do the best job they possibly can. But now it's up to the drivers to make this count as they shake hands on a fair race and a great battle. It's time to wage war for the X30 IAMI Winter Cup Senior Final. I love the smell of rubber in the afternoon. It's the smell of great victories on the horizon. We've had three champions so far in Miguel Pero Lezoraga, in Mari Boya, in Nico Robasa. Who will be the fourth and final champion for the 2018 IAMI Winter Cup here at the circuit of Lucas Guerrero Cartodromo in downtown Shiva outside the city of Valencia? Two minutes to start, and the drivers are ready for battle. Turney on the inside line. Dean McDonald on the outside line. Ravenscroft, Clark, Kimber, Brown Nutley, Norris, Westover, White, and Pescador giving chase. 87 drivers we started with. Now there are just 34. Only one can emerge as the champion. Every single driver in the top three has been on the top step of a podium this weekend and have won races. Joe Turney, Dean McDonald, and Clayton Ravenscroft. They have all been winners this weekend. 
Mark Kimber as well. It's going to be an interesting one. And we'll see who emerges as the victor in what promises to be easily the most exciting, the most unpredictable, the most hotly anticipated race of the weekend. The 2018 IAMI Winter Cup X30 Senior Final. Here at the Cartodromo, Lucas Guerrero. And now it is time for battle. 34 drivers ready for action. One of these guys we're looking at could well go on to an amazing career in the world of motorsport and could well be ringing to the sound of his name on the loudspeakers at the likes of Le Mans, the Nürburgring, Daytona, Sebring. It all starts here, ladies and gentlemen, as the drivers wage battle and go to an absolute rally down to the first corner. The formation laps will commence shortly, and then it's all down to the drivers who will battle for the victory in the second annual IAMI Winter Cup. The fans are all around the circuit. The green flag flies, and we are ready to race. Turney, McDonald, Ravenscroft, Clark, Kimber, Brown Nutley, Norris, Westover, White, Pescador, Morin, Saval, Rawson, Lawrence, Porter, Moya, Runquist, Bornes Cotes, Vava, Herrera de Dios, Mathia, Lunticanto, Donich, Liedmar, Giraud, Olsen, Van Pelt, Hansame, Eriksson, Lahoslup, Malizia, Shani, Hernandez, and McDonald. Keep an eye on Sam McDonald from the back of the grid. Don't forget he won one of his heats earlier in the weekend. So starting from the back of the grid is not where he wanted to be. However, he will be charging forward from that last row of the grid. This is the battle we've all been waiting for. How on earth is this going to play out? Joe Turney, Dean McDonald, Clayton Ravenscroft, Oliver Clark, Mark Kimber, Jordan Brown Nutley. They've all done enough to win in my book but it's all about who actually makes it stick. Only one can walk away as the champion. And they've got 17 laps to prove that it's up to them. This one is gonna be so tough, so tight, so tense, and absolutely electric. So Joe Turney on the front row of the grid with Dean McDonald alongside. Who is going to get that charge? There's so many races that have come before this. Turney has been a winner. So has McDonald. So has Ravenscroft. So has Mark Kimber behind him on the right side. So has Sam McDonald right at the back of the grid. We've got several drivers charging through. The likes of Oliver Clark has always been near the front. So has Jordan Brown Nutley. John Norris and Louis Westover have always been in the mix. Philip Rawson is on the comeback trail. We've got the likes of Jorge Pescador and Carlos Saval on the right side of the grid with local knowledge. Sam White and Hans Morin, who never, ever give up. Ruben Moyer, who's been fighting his way back through the field. And then several drivers who are on the comeback trail after disappointing pre-finals. The likes of Daniel Mathia, Levi Lintikanto, Kamal Donich, Matilda Olsen, Renz Van Pelt, Xavier Hansen, Sam McDonnell. They're all going to want to try and make their way up through the field. Don't forget the Frenchman Arnon Milizia, who was on the front row earlier in the weekend as well. There are lots of reasons to be expectant of an amazing battle. Turney on one side, McDonald on the other, and it's go, 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 go! We're racing! Straight away, it's a three-way scrap to the first corner as everybody tries to muscle in a position, but into the lead, it's Joe Turney, no problem at all. It's a clean start through the first corner as they all sweep through, and Ravenscroft has got into second, and we got two cards off on the far side. And that's caused pandemonium, Sam White's gone around, and two or three cards have gone in together. Oh, it's the most chaotic third corner, but Sam White is the man who comes off absolutely at worst. And we've got someone rejoining the fray, having missed turn six and seven and trying to get up to speed. Now, that could be an interesting one for the officials. But out in front, it is KR Sport one and two as Turney and Ravenscroft have got away and clear. Joe Turney has definitely got himself a big gap out in front. And that's exactly what he wanted. He has already won three times, or is that four times now by my math? over the course of the weekend. Now he wants to make it the critical one that will finish off the weekend in style. Across the line, he continues on his way. Ravenscroft in second, but for how much longer? Here comes McDonald. Dean McDonald down on the inside line. He's the other flying Scotsman in the paddock. And Dean McDonald gets himself in his second position. Fourth place now, that is Mark Kimber. Mark Kimber pushing himself very far indeed with Oliver Clark. And that's Jordan Brown Nutley making his way into fourth position. Jordan Brown Nutley now in front of Kimber, Clark, and John Norris in seventh position. 
Eighth place, is that Philip Rawson? It is! Philip Rawson is there in P9, just in front of Ruben Moyer. Although Moyer was trying to make his way through on the inside there. And they've both got past Hans Morin. But Philip Rawson is having an amazing comeback. He's up into P8 now. So as they go down the back straight, Turney is still your leader. McDonald's second, Ravenscroft third. Then it is Kimber in front of Brown Nutley. Clark is there in the next position. And then it is John Norris in front of Philip Rawson, Ruben Meyer. And then in the 219, that is Hans Morin with Louis Westover leading the charge behind. Then it's Enric Bordes Cortes, Sim Leadmark, Carlos Saval, Philip Vava, Jorge Pescador, Camille Dernich, and Levi Lutecanto in 18th. Great racing at the front. Fourth position is being debated. McDonald hanging on in front of Ravenscroft, but now it's Kimber leading the charge from Brown, Nutley, Clark, and Norris. John Norris at the back of the queue there, trying to make his way past Oliver Clark. But the Litchfield Racing driver proving to be quite difficult to overtake at the moment. Now, the battle between these four or five drivers in the mix behind Joe Turney is obviously getting faster and faster as they cooperate with each other down the back straight. And Joe Turney is not going to be allowed to run away with this one at a canter. He will come at the end of lap three to go into the next one with 14 remaining. Turney, McDonald, Ravenscroft, Kimber, Brown Nutley, Clark and Norris. Then it is Ruben Moyer in front of Hans Morin and Philip Rawson. The top 10 continues to scrap away. And despite that little me melee at the start, we still have, I think, pretty much everybody still racing, except for Christopher Sharney, the Frenchman. Sharney is the only one out of the race, I do believe. And I think that is damage sustained in that first lap melee. And unfortunately, one driver that's been pushed down to the back of the queue is Matilda Olsen, who was making up good progress. So she's going to have to fight her way through again. But back at the front, it is tightening up. Turney's lead is being decimated by McDonald and Ravenscroft. They know how to work this. They know how to race against each other. And they know how to close up on the leader in cooperation. Through the right flicks. Down to the S's. Right. Left. Right again, and it's all going very well indeed for McDonald and Ravenscroft to close up on Joe Turney. They have got the raw pace to get there. And on this lap, I have a feeling McDonald may even get an opportunity to make a move for the lead. He's right there with Joe Turney now. And this was the battle we were hoping for. The Senior X30 final is really getting on with it now. Into the right. Into the sweeping left. It's all or nothing in this race. The winner of this is the champion, and they know it. I love these one-day events, these one-weekend meetings. It brings out the very best in a driver, the very aggressive, the very strategic, the very calculating, and the cream always rises to the top. Ravenscroft dives up the inside of McDonald. Ravenscroft makes the move to second place. You're taking too long to get up to Joe Turney, mate. I'm going to have a go. He's in my own stable. I know how he's going to do. So Ravenscroft up in a second position. McDonald is now going to have to work with him unless he can find a way to get back through. But Joe Turney and Clayton Ravenscroft now in first and second. Dean McDonald is going to try again. McDonald leaves it late. He decides not to go for the move in the end. But Turney, Ravenscroft, and McDonald are very close together, the leading three. Fourth place is Mark Kimber. Then it's Brown Nutley and Clark. Norris, Ruben Moyer, Hans Morin, and Philip Rawson. And then it is Enric Bordes Cortes. Philip Vava, Sim Liedmar, Saval, Pescador, Westover, Donich, McDonald, way up to 18th place, by the way. Levi Lintercanto and Morgan Porter. Keep an eye on Sam McDonald. He's still got plenty of time to work his way forward. But on lap six, having started dead last, 34th, Sam McDonald is 18th, would you believe? Absolutely amazing. So down the back straight, we have a new leader. And his name is Dean McDonald. McDonald has got in front of both Turney and Ravenscroft. Here we go again. They're going to shuffle once more. And Ravenscroft got a little bit loose as Turney retook the lead from McDonald. Oh, no, it's Ravenscroft in the lead. My apologies. Ravenscroft leads in front of McDonald. Then it's Turney. Then it's Kimber. They shuffle around for position once more. Clark and Brown Nutley are there in fifth and sixth. Are trying to go for the move on the inside. Mark Kimber tries his best to get past Turney. He's not going to get there. And Clark is going to get through. So is Brown Nutley. McDonald, meanwhile, gets past Ravenscroft, and now it's all changed. Turney's down to fifth. Kimber's down to sixth. And Oliver Clark is through in a third position in front of Jordan Brown Nutley. And all of a sudden, we've got a real battle on our hands now. 
McDonald's still leading. Clayton Ravenscroft in second. Clark is now third. Back into fourth goes Joe Turney. Past Jordan Brown Nutley with Chasing Hard. We now have Kimber in sixth, Norris in seventh, and Ruben Moyer in eighth. And they're all on the same stretch. Ravenscroft is going to try again here onto the back of Dean McDonald. Can he push him over the edge? Ravenscroft is working hard. He's not got help from Joe Turney anymore. He's going to keep trying down the main straight. So let's see how it all goes. McDonald is your leader. Ravenscroft in second place, still fighting hard. Now I wonder if the front fairings are all going to be safe and sound on the top eight of these cards. Well, John Norris risking it big time there. As uh, he goes up and over the curbs at turn three. It's all getting a little bit hectic in the midfield as well. The drivers are still pushing on, really struggling in some phases of the race. That's Jorge Pescador losing ground. So Pescador seems to have lost out a little bit there. His teammate Daniel Nogales is out. Oh, now there's somebody in trouble. We've got somebody whose uh, exhaust is hanging off the car as Ruben Moyer is making up a couple of places. I think he's found his way to get past both Jordan Brown Nutley and John Norris. But we've got someone trailing at the back of the field and losing time hand over fist. Mechanical difficulties. Whoa, it's getting all very hectic indeed. But at the front, it is McDonald versus Ravenscroft still. And still the drivers battle around. We've got someone coming into the pits. I'll try and double check who that is, but I think that's the cart with the loose exhaust to retire from the race. And it is indeed, and I'm afraid to say, it is game over for Levi Lintucanto. The Finn is out of the race. That is such a shame. And Levi Lintucanto did his best. He had a good weekend. He proved he was fast and very strong indeed. But today was not his day. Dean McDonald and Clayton Ravenscroft still battling for the lead of this race. Oliver Clark is being caught by Joe Turney in third and fourth. Fifth position, that is Mark Kimber in front of Ruben Moyer, John Norris and Jordan Brown Nutley. Then comes the man in ninth place, Hans Morin, Philip Rawson, Philip Vava, Enric Botescotes, Louis Westover, Sim Leadmark, Connor Saval and Sam McDonald. Down the home straight once again. We're on lap 10 out of 17. Eight laps to go. And still Ravenscroft hustling. Your man in the lead of the race, Dean McDonald. Joe Turney now in third position. He's made the move on Oliver Clark and he's into third position. We've got a real squabble on our hands as drivers are battling away all the way down the grid. And there are still electrifying races going on around the circuit as everybody wants to finish on a high and wants to be at the front of their queue. Even if it means they're not going to win, as long as you finish at the head of your train, you have done a reasonably good job. And McDonald is still hanging on in front of Clayton Ravenscroft. And up to fourth position comes Kimber. He makes the move on Oliver Clark. So the top four are the way they used to be again. We've got two carts crossed up. We've got two carts together at turn 10. And it looks like both of them are out of the race. So we've got two of them having come together at turn 10. We'll have to double check who it is as they come through. But I think it's Leadmar and McDonald. I think it is Sam McDonald and Sim Leedmar, the Estonian. So that is a real shame for Sam McDonald, having fought his way through from the back of the grid. Sam McDonald and Sim Leedmar collide with each other and are now out of this race, or at least certainly out of contention, even if not out of the race. It would not surprise me if both drivers decided to return to the pits. They don't. They decide to continue on. But that is game over in terms of going for the victory for Sim Leadmar and Sam McDonald, who slot into 32nd and 31st, respectfully. But now, Turney, Kimber and Clark are battling away for third position to try and close down on McDonald and Ravenscroft. And we are on lap 11 of 17. Seven to go, including this one. Down the back straight. Ravenscroft again, trying to assist Dean McDonald in getting away from the pack. As he now he's going for the move into the S's. And this time, Clayton Ravenscroft has got himself a good position. Now, McDonald is compromised. And this is a chance for Joe Turney. McDonald is defending to the inside line. And that's got him a safe position for the moment. In second place, Joe Turney right behind him. Kimber is there. And so too is Oliver Clark. Five Brits battling for the victory. They could swap the podium in the same way as we saw in the X30 Minis and the X30 Super Shifters for Spain and Switzerland. It could be an all-British podium in the X30 Seniors. It will be if it finishes like this, but I'm not sure it will. We may still get an all-British podium, but the order is still unpredictable as Tony makes the move. Tony gets past McDonald and Clark makes the move on Kimber. Kimber defends and stops the charge. So Tony in second place. McDonald is third. Kimber is fourth. Clark is fifth. And Ruben Meyer behind them is up to sixth. 
So there will be at least one Spaniard in the top six if it stays like this. But John Norris and Jordan Brown Nutley are still trying to catch him. But at the moment, it is Clayton Ravenscroft who leads the way. What an absolute riot this would be for Ravenscroft if he could win the final. He's only five laps away. But that is a very long five laps. Joe Turney still very close, as is McDonald, as is Kimber, as is Clark. And none of these four will give up. Clayton Ravenscroft still leading very well indeed, but he's getting a little bit ragged in places. It's not easy to run on your own. And that's why these four running in unison are going to close him up sooner rather than later. You've got to love the way this race ebbs and flows. It's amazing as these drivers battle for position. All five of them have had the opportunity to win this one and all five of them deserve it. But only one of them can stand on the top step of the podium. It's going to be absolutely spellbinding as Ravenscroft tries to check out in front of Turney, McDonald, Kimber and Clark. Out of the final turn. Ravenscroft has four more to go. The gap is enough to be comfortable until McDonald assists Turney. And that's exactly what he does down the home straight. We are not done yet, folks, by a long shot. Four laps remain in the X30 senior final. Whoa, up and over the curbs for Joe Turney. That's how high he's pushing. Jordan Brown Nutley has got past John Norris. And Norris is trying to respond again with plenty of curb. But Ravenscroft leads. Can he hold on to it? So many people watching back home, hoping that this is going to be Ravenscroft's day. But his teammate Joe Turney has plenty of his own supporters as well. And he will be wanted to try and put one over on his teammate. Up to a certain point, they assist each other in the same team. But once they get to a certain stage, then it is every man for himself. Down towards the chicane once more. Ravenscroft still there. And up comes McDonald. Oh, turney has got a little bit wide. And up and over the curves. Up over the grass. And Oliver Clark's going to get through to third position. And Joe Turney apologises to Clark. Didn't realise he was there on the left side. And that could easily have damaged both carts. But Ravenscroft is through and clear in the lead with McDonald in second place. Turney's trying to defend from Oliver Clark. And Kimber was held up. Oh, it all got a little bit messy in the S's. And that's all it takes. But McDonald decided to pounce. And have we got someone out of the race? I think we have. I'm just trying to see who it is over the far side. Is that Jordan Brown Nutley? I think it's Jordan Brown Nutley out of the race. That is an absolute disaster. Jordan Brown Nutley, who's been so strong all weekend, has finally brought his race to a standstill. And that is such a shame. Jordan Brown Nutley retires from the final. He was definitely in with a chance of the victory, but it's all gone away now. As up the inside for third position goes Kimber on Joe Turney. Now Oliver Clark's got a way out, but they've got to watch out for Ruben Moyer. Ruben Moyer is on the back of them as well. The battle for third position is absolutely raging as they go through turn one. And they're side by side. Kimber gets slid sideways there by Joe Turney. He has to dart back to the inside for turn three to stop Oliver Clark coming through. Clayton Ravenscroft, meanwhile, is desperately trying to disappear away from Dean McDonald, but McDonald is matching in for pace. McDonald, six thousandths of a second quicker than Ravenscroft in the first sector. Can Ravenscroft hang on in the final two laps in front of McDonald? I don't think it's done yet. McDonald's going to do everything he can, but I think the battle for victory will be between those two Ravenscroft and McDonald. Down the back straight. Clayton Ravenscroft leading by a few cart lengths to Dean McDonald. He's got just over a lap into the S's for the last time but one. Right, left, right. Plenty of curbs from both of them. McDonald gets out sideways, keeps it under control. But that might be enough for Ravenscroft now. The gap is six tenths of a second. Turney's clear in third. Kimber is battling away with Clark for fourth position. Ruben Moyer and John Norris are in there with them. And I think we may have settled our podium. It's been an absolutely incredible battle in the Senior X30s. 87 drivers started the weekend to even get into the final. You had to be one of the best drivers around the race circuit. We've seen so many drivers battle and take victories. We've seen Joe Turney, Dean McDonald and Mark Kimber victorious on multiple occasions. Clayton Ravenscroft had only won one heat coming into this. But crucially, he was on the inside line in third position for the pre-final grid. So that has given him the opportunity to get himself into a good position. He comes through the right-handers, both the flicks, nice and easy, no pressure at all, into the right, left, right. And Clayton Ravenscroft has done it! He is the X30 Senior Winter Cup Champion! 
Clayton Ravenscroft has done it in style. Boom. Thank you and good night. What a victory. <laughs> Clayton Ravenscroft has stormed the Crows. It's an all-British podium with Dean McDonald and Joe Turney. But Clayton Ravenscroft, so calculated, so strategic through the course of that race, played it absolutely spot on and has earned his place on the top step of the podium. Clayton Ravenscroft for KR Sport is victorious. So the fiesta can begin for KR Sport and Clayton Ravenscroft. And well done to his teammate, Joe Turney, on the podium as well. Commiserations to Dean McDonald in second place. So near and yet so far for the strawberry racing driver. But what a battle it was to get to that stage. And what a victory for Clayton Ravenscroft. He is the new X30 senior IAMI Winter Cup champion of 2018. Wow. We have no more racing left, and I am totally and utterly worn out. But what a spectacle it's been. Absolutely fantastic. 33 races later, and we have crowned our four champions. Miguel Pedro Lazalaga, Nico Robasa, Marty Boyer, and now Clayton Ravenscroft in the X30 Seniors. Let's go through the rest of the results. Dean McDonald in second from Joe Turney. Mark Kimber and Oliver Clark make it an all-British top five. Ruben Moyer in sixth place, ahead of John Norris, the Irishman, in seventh place. Philip Vava is eighth from Louis Westover and Enrique Bodescotes. Philip Rawson, a valiant effort to 11th place. And then come the comeback kids. Xavier Hansame, Alejandro Lajasloup, and Arnold Milizia. They all made up at least 16 places, with Lajasloup and Milizia making up 17 in all. Jorge Pescador in a difficult 15th place, ahead of Daniel Mathia, his teammate. Sam White and Morgan Porter, a valiant effort, just, outside, just inside the top 20, sorry, ahead of Gus Lawrence and the 20th place man, Fred Erickson. Then we had Renz van Pelt and Antonio Herrerias de Dios, Patrick Rundqvist, Enzo Giraud, Matilda Olsen, Juan Carlos Hernandez Ruiz, and Sim Liedmar, with unfortunately retirements, as we already mentioned, from Jordan Brown Nutley. Uh, Carlos Saval and Hans Morin didn't make the flag. Neither did Camille Donich or Sam McDonnell in the end. And then we also had retirements from Levi Lintucantu and the man who failed to start, Christopher Sharney. But we have our four champions, Miguel Pedro Lozaraga in the X30 Minis, in the X30 Super Shifters, Nico Robassa, in the X30 Juniors, it is Mari Boyer, and in the X30 Seniors, it is Clayton Ravenscroft. Two victories for Spain and a winner piece for Britain and Switzerland and a fantastic end to an amazing event in the IAMI Winter Cup. We still have the podium ceremonies to come a little later, so for those watching on Telemundi Media, uh, we still have those to come, so do please stick around because we will get the podium ceremonies underway as soon as possible for those guys. For those who have been watching for the racing, I hope you've been as entertained as we have. And for the listeners of Downforce UK as well, our coverage is going to come to a close. But a huge thank you to everybody at RGMMC and, of course, the Cartadroma Lucas Guerrero for putting on a fantastic event. 3,000 times better than last year, and last year was pretty good anyway. Well, can we do it all again in 12 months, please? I certainly hope so. I'm looking forward to coming back to this magnificent circuit next February for 2019 well we'll do it over again for the IAMI Winter Cup here in Valencia but of course this is only the stepping stone to the IAMI European Series all of our champions today have won a free entry to the European Championship which begins on the last weekend in March for the French round of the championship at Salbris in May for the Marienburg round in Belgium in July we go to Germany for Wackersdorf and then for the finale on the second weekend in August it is Castelletto in Italy so we have our four champions and it's time to end the race coverage with an absolutely fantastic four races. I hope you all enjoyed it. I'm Jake Sanson from the commentary position here at the Cartadromo Lucas Guerrero in Chiva in Valencia. It's been amazing, I'm sure you'll agree. And 33 races later, we're sorry that it's over, but we are delighted of the results. We'll see you again for the IAMI Winter Cup in 12 months time, but we'll see you again next month in Salbris in France for the IAMI X30 Euro Series.